Hi, welcome. Uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, some of the quality tools that we talked about earlier also. So the first one is the Pareto analysis. So let's understand what is Pareto analysis. So as we all know that this is one of the seven tools of quality and Pareto works on the 80-20 principle, which means that if you can work and correct the top 20% of your problems, then 80% of the process can be improved. Okay, Which means if you work on the top 20% of the defects, then you would be able to resolve 80% of your problems within your process or within your organization. So therefore, Pareto analysis is being used in organizations to improve problems, to resolve conflicts. And this is also used in different, different Six Sigma projects as well. Pareto tool is used in such a way so that, so that we should make very less efforts and would be able to work on the major impact. And let's understand first why this tool is being used. Because in a business process, in, in a usual organization or in a process, we have a lot many problems where we need to work on. Okay. And it is not possible to work on all the problems at one go. Therefore, we have to prioritize that what are my top 20% issues. If I work on, I'll be able to resolve 80% of my problem. Okay. So that's why this tool is very, very useful. Uh, Pareto is a is a standard which says 80-20, but sometimes we don't all, always have to strive for 80% or 20%. It is a, just a standard, okay? Uh, sometimes it is 75% that we'll be focusing on. Sometimes it will be 82% we'll be focusing on. It's just a standard which says that if you focus on the top 20% problems, around 20% problems, we will be able to improve around 80% of our issues, okay? So 20% of the defects are being contributed by 80% of the total defects, okay? So th this is how a Pareto analysis is being talked about. So we have, uh, we will be talking about how to do this on Minitab as well. So let's understand all the seven quality tools and then we'll do the hands-on of each of these tools on Minitab. Uh, just want to tell you one more thing. Pareto charts are extremely useful because it helps you to focus your attention on the few important factors of the process instead of focusing on all factors at one time. And therefore, Pareto analysis is being used. The next seven tools of quality that we have for us is a scatter plot. Okay. Scatter plot is also known as scatter diagram. This is one of the perfect tool which is used to identify the relationship between two different variables. Okay. Likewise, we talk about Pareto. Uh, uh, this is only used to identify the top errors for one particular variable. However, in the scatter plot, we are going to talk about how to establish a relationship between two different variables. This is something which we would learn with the help of scatter plot, or we can call it as a scatter diagram. Okay. So as I said earlier, it tells us the relationship between two different variables, and it's a very important tool which help us in estimating the degree and the direction of correlation between two variables. So when I'm saying degree, it tells us the impact, whether it has a strong impact, medium impact, or a low impact. And also it gave us certain directions for what we need to focus on. Okay. So when we, when we do the scatter plot, uh, there is a R value, which gave us an interpretation. Once this tool is being designed and this denotes that if the R value is between 0.4, to one, it's called a perfect positive correlation. We'll talk about what is positive correlation and what is negative and what is no correlation. Let's first understand the interpretation and then we'll talk about in detail. Okay. So uh, perfect positive correlation is 0 0.4 to one. Then we have moderate correlation. Moderate correlation uh, is when the R value is between 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. If you want to interpret the weak correlation, we would say it only when the R value is 
between 0 to 0 0.2. And then we have perfect negative correlation, which means when the R value is less than zero, uh, it's a negative, which could be uh, minus one, uh, minus one or something in negative, that's called a perfect negative correlation. Okay, and if it is zero or near to zero, then we would say that's absence of correlation. That means that's, a, that's a, a no correlation between two different variables. Okay, let's understand it in with the help of an example. Okay, so for example, uh, if we are doing a project on improving the productivity, okay, and we have identified as one of the variables as the quality quality scores okay of the team now i have two variables as i said earlier in scatter plot we focus on two variables one is productivity and another is a quality scores so now we want to establish a correlation between two variables and before i get into that detail i want to make you understand that what are the significance of these uh, correlation when do we call it as a perfect positive correlation or a positive correlation. Positive correlation means when one variable increases, the other variable also increases. Or if the one variable decreases, another variable also decreases. So in a nutshell, both the variables moves in the same direction. Okay, so when we take an example of productivity versus quality, if productivity increases, my quality also increases. If my advisors associates are being less productive then we would be able to say that they are they are getting less quality score so if this is the scenario when we take two variables like quality and productivity then in that case it's a positive correlation because if one increases another increases if one decreases another decreases. so it's in the same direction okay so that's a positive correlation what is negative correlation? Negative correlation means if in the same example that we have taken, if productivity increases, quality decreases. Of, or if productivity decreases, quality increases. Okay, so either ways, if that is the scenario, which means both the variables are moving in the opposite direction. In that case, we would say the relationship between X and Y is a negative sort of correlation okay and what is absence of correlation no relation which means that no matter what my productivity is quality score has no sort of relation they are far poles apart they don't have any sort of relation uh, that is what we consider as a scatter plot so now if in this particular example when we prepare a scatter plot for productivity versus quality and uh, uh, with the help of that example, when we prepare a scatter plot, we would be able to establish uh, what sort of correlation is that. It's a perfect positive, moderate correlation, weak correlation. So these three are part of positive because you see the numbers are positive. So it ranges from zero to minus one. Okay. So negative is, as we say, less than zero and in negative. And if it's exact zero or very, very near to zero, then it's called a no correlation. So we'll talk about in detail that how does this scatter plot looks like, how to interpret that in our mini time exercise. That means when we will do the hands-on exercises for these tools. But I hope you all have understood what is a scatter plot. Uh, this is one of the perfect quality tools uh, which help us to see the correlation of two different variables. So you cannot, you, you shouldn't limit it only to one variable. So you, you try this with other variables also. Okay. So for example, if you are doing a project on improving productivity, you can do uh, productivity versus quality. You can do productivity versus uh, uh, different variables like productivity versus customer satisfaction, productivity versus uh, scores, productivity versus defect rate, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, with all the possible combinations that you have, you can use a scatter plot and with the help of that, you will get some meaningful information 
which would help you to make a certain decision whether to work on this particular X or cause not. Okay.